Let me show you our nymph rig, the lovely leg style. Well, here it is, January 1st, 2017. This is Benny P with Lively Lakes Fly Fishing. I'm out on the trout stream this morning, breaking in a new year, and I thought I'd go over our nymph rig setup. We have a lot of people that ask us, not only what leaders do you guys use, or how do you tie your own leaders, and what formula do you use, but how do you set up your nymph rigs? So this is not gonna be about our leaders. That's gonna be another video that Iron Mike's gonna do, but this video here is just gonna be simple, how we set up our nymph rigs. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we fish tippet rings off of our leaders. We fish our leaders, the lengths of our leader, depending on the size of the stream. As far as the tippet, off our tippet ring, that all depends on how deep the water is that we're fishing around that. What makes a tippet ring nice is you can easily change the length of your tippet without going over and having to change your whole leader out. But long story short, we're gonna go over this nymph rig. This is the winter time. What we like to do in the winter time is we like to fish in a tractor and an egg pattern. And that's the nymph we like to fish up top. So this is going to be a double nymph rig, which is actually going to be in a tractor slash egg nymph rig. We're going to come down. In today's water, I'm fishing mostly between two to four feet of water. So I have four and a half feet of tippet leading down to what we call a Y2K. It's a Y2K pattern we sell on livelylegs.com. It's been an unbelievable winter slash early spring pattern for us when the nymphs aren't very active yet and we've actually absolutely pounded the rainbow trout on this pattern and a lot of wild brownies and brookies in the winter time come springtime you might as well forget it like mid-spring take this guy off and put on a traditional nymph or put on an attractor nymph or something that's going to look more alive in the water okay there it is i'm coming down off my tippet I usually use a heavier piece of tippet here. This one, for example, is 4X. We got a little bit of stained water and I can get away with that. It's as simple as tying a clinch knot. Some guys may tie a palm oar knot, a trilene knot. I personally prefer to tie off the back end of that hook. As you can see, I'm right off the back end of the hook. Now I will tell you, a lot of guys and I think, for example, Danny Z and maybe Jeff Wasson, they tie off that eye of that hook for their dropper. I tie off the back end of the hook. I've experimented for myself. I've noticed no difference in hookup ratios, and that to me is easier to do than to try to fit another piece of line through that eye. So there it is. That's actually a trilene knot. I tie off the back end of that hook, and we're looking at approximately anywhere from 16 to 20 inches. I'll go ahead and put my dropper nip. Winter time. I absolutely love to use a disco midge or a crystal midge. It's been a great pattern for me, especially for rainbow trout, and that's what I'm fishing for today. Uh, if I was fishing for wild brown trout, I would not be using this pattern right here. I'd be using, most likely, my little olive nymph or a sulfur nymph or a big golden stone fly. That's pretty much set up, and that's how we set up our nymph rig. We come down off our tippet. The tippet off of our tippet ring is gonna depend on the depth of the water. You wanna be definitely longer than the depth so for example if you're fishing four feet of water solid four feet you'll want six feet of tippet or somewhere around there you know the guys that are the professionals have it all figured out hey i apologize if that's not enough or too much for you but typically for me that's worked very well so about one and a half times the depth you're going to come down you're going to put your first fly which today of course is the y2k it's magical in the winter time and early spring I almost forgot to add, I have a little piece of split shot in between, and that split shot all depends on how fast the water's flowing. We don't have a great flow here, this is not a real fast free stone stream, so I have one average size split shot leading down to a very small nymph, and that nymph right there is Crystal Midge. Okay, so before I go, I want to show everybody, I have my leader coming into a piece of cider line, and then right there you can see at my beard that's tippet ring going into tippet of approximately four feet of tippet it's going to my first fly which is a y2k split shot approximately 18 inches a liter i'm sorry tippet in between those two and there's my little crystal midge the tippet in between these two is 5x the tippet in front is 4x and the reason why I do that is if I catch a snag on this fly or on that split shot I'm not going to lose the Y2K along with this part of the setup. So I hope that helps out. 
I'm going to go ahead and also throw a few fish that I catch as I'm fishing this section into the video. My goodness, I cannot begin to tell you how sensitive these little buggerooskies are hitting this morning. I mean, if you're out there fishing, no matter if you're using a sighter line or an indicator, and you see the slightest pause in your line or the slightest bump in your indicator, some of these cold, cold mornings, you have to set that hook right then. Excuse me one second, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with my rod right there. Okay, we're gonna send this little guy on his way. Get out there and get a few more. There it is. There it is. Nice looking little rainbow trout. And there he is. Let's get him back home in the water. There it is. Another nice looking little rainbow. Little guy got off. Just a little dink. This is a good one here. Boom! That's a good fish. Out here filming this. Little film I wanted to do about our nymph rig. And I'm gonna show you, this fish has been in a stream for a while. This is a good one. Now I just caught it on a sulfur nymph. I have the Y2K up top. And my hand's good and wet. And look at that. That is one beautiful looking rainbow trout right there. So what I'm out here doing, fishing that double nymph rig I just showed you. Let me get him back in the water. Okay, let's release this beauty back in. That's the way we do it right there.
Another good looking trout. Look at that little par mark beauty right there. Tight line nymphing, our nymphing setup. Here with the Lively Legs crew. While I get this little tangle out, another thing I wanted to add to the video is today I'm upstream nymphing and that's the way I almost always like to nymph fish. The more and more these fish see hooks, the longer they've been in the water and they've seen predators, the more and more wary they are when they see you coming. If you're going to walk straight up to a hole, throw, the, throw in the hole, standing right over top of the fish, most likely you spook those fish up into the next pot of fish, maybe up into the next, under the next rock where that big fish is hanging out, and you've completely ruined that section of water. So if you upstream nymph it, you catch those fish, you pull them out before you work upstream, they're not looking at you come at them. They're facing upstream, they're feeding upstream, the water's flowing down, they're facing this way, they're feeding, throw your nymphs up above them, your nymphs come down, boom, you catch them, you pull them down to where you are, and uh, you don't mess up the next section of water. Just a little tip, anybody who's out there and they're so used to, especially here in our home state of Pennsylvania where there's a great stocking program, they walk up to those raceways when they feed these fish that they're gonna stock, and they're used to seeing people and they're used to getting fed. The longer these fish are in a stream, and the more you fish for wild fish, you're gonna find out that not every fish is gonna accept you walking straight up to a hole, stepping three or four feet out into the water, usually on top of fish, and uh, throwing your cast. You make 2017 one of those years where you push yourself to become a better fisherman. I know I sure as heck am gonna try to do the same thing, and uh, you'll enjoy your time on the water a little bit more with some more tight lines. Not that time. Looks like I got another one on the sulfur nymph. That fist pump you saw me do in the background, that was a missed fish. So I cast right back to that same holding spot. So I can get them out of here. Try to be really gentle on these little guys. And there he is. Got that one with the sulfur nymph. It's been about a 50-50 split today. Between the nymphs, see those barless hooks come right out. And the Y2Ks. There we go. I don't know how many I got with the left handed hook set in the video. You notice I fish left and right handed, and uh, but I'm set up to fish right hand as far as my reel goes. But my shoulders give me problems at times from a lot of years of doing this kind of stuff and being 40 some years old. And sometimes you have to learn, you have to fish with both hands. You have to hold that rod with both hands. You're holding that rod up high, your high stick kind of nymphing, but I, I necessarily don't call, always call it high stick nymphing. Most of what I'm doing is just tight line nymphing, but sometimes I hold that stick up really high and that can really wear on you. I'm going to show you this fish here. He's actually caught with the Y2K pattern. This is the rainbow Y2K, but the sulfur nymphs in his gill plate a little bit, so I'll be careful when I get that out, but check him out. He's got the Y2K in his mouth, sulfur nymph in the side of his head. Well, I'll tell you what, he engulfed that Y2K. Another look at that little guy, nice little rainbow trout. One more. One more for the left-handed style, and I'll show you this one. He was caught on a nymph. You see the Y2K's up front. 
and that there is our sulfur nymph, which is just a great all year pattern for us. I ended up having too much fun having the opportunity to get some hookups on video. So this video quickly went to a fishing slash nymph rig setup video. Okay, I've been showing you the hookups. You're gonna have to watch. I don't know how well you can see this in the video, but uh, watch how I'm holding my nymph rod up high to get over top of the slack water. I don't have any fly line on the water and I'm staying in that faster run out there and I'm just letting it drift through at a very natural pace on the bottom. It's rolling and drifting. And as those nymphs and of course my egg pattern, my Y2K goes past those fish, it looks so natural, it looks real, they're gonna eat it. And that's what I'm doing today. That's how simple it is. If I can do this, anyone can do this. Let me hop back out there as soon as I get these flies untangled from that last fish. Okay, flies are untangled. Let me hop back out there. See if we can't get another one on video. I'm gonna do probably another left-handed hookup because it's been working well for me. There we go, a little bit of a camera change. There it is. I can't stress enough how important it is to have your flies on the bottom, especially in this cold, cold, cold winter water. When I came out here today, it was 20 some degrees. That one took the Y2K egg pattern. When I came out today, it was in the 20s. I'm pretty sure 26 degrees was the temperature on my truck. Water temperature, I didn't check. There he is, little beauty. Back in the water. But I'm gonna guess this water's flowing in the high 30s, low 40s right now. It's very, very cold. So it's so important to have those nymphs at all times. Especially, especially, especially when they're not coming up for emergers or dry flies and they're just laying at that bottom, holding in a spot. Get some extra drifts through that area. Drift past that fish and show it. Here's some food. Give it a reason to want to eat, and that's what we do. We drift past it, we take a little more time in the winter time, we do some extra drifts, and we make sure we cover that water well. Especially when you see a really fast run with a little bit of a back eddy or soft spot behind it, hit that water hard, especially in the winter time. When the nymphs are a little act less active and the fish aren't in there feeding through that fast water when they're sitting back out of the current, taking a break, and they're in more of that lethargic stage of life, you have to put the food right in front of them. And that's what we do. There we go. I didn't want to force them, put more pressure on them, so I just went out and got him. But there he is, another beauty. Just like I said, keeping my rod up high, keeping my fly line off the water. I have that piece of cider line and I'm keeping my eye on it because it's easy to see some guys are good at just watching their fly line I actually infuse a piece of cider line in my leaders and that cider line has a little bit of sag my rod tips in front I'm following the drift my line is back like this and that sag if that's the cider line I watch it move I watch it I mean it'll have a sag it'll tighten up bam that's when you set the hook
Having a field day today. Just a little guy. There we go. That last little guy I got on the sulfur nymph. It's like a 50-50 split between those nymphs and this Y2K. My hand's good and wet. That one right there, he's all wrapped up. You can see I got him on the Y2K. Those are the lively legs, sulfur nymphs, prince nymphs, and uh, crystal midge that's worked well today. Seems like the sulfur nymphs, the hot, hot, hot fly. I changed up quite a bit until I got that nymph on, and I haven't changed it ever since because it's working that well. And then I haven't changed the rainbow Y2K no need to the thing's gone 50 50 with the nymphs today i wish i would have videotaped and filmed the whole way down through i got several pictures to post on facebook i quit taking pictures and just started getting video because you know this cold winter water has been working out really well for me today This is amazing. I found a spot where these fish are sitting. Oh my goodness. It is just one after another. Check this one. Looks like a baby steelhead. Beautiful looking shiny little rainbow. Nice full fins. We're back in. Well, quick time check says 11:26 a.m. and I just had another order come in which means I'm gonna have a busy day here on January 1st packing orders for lively legs I'd like to thank everybody for following along on my adventure that I thought was just gonna be a little video on our nymph rig setup but turned into an actual self film fishing video I'd like to thank everybody once again for following along on our adventures and until next time best of luck in the outdoors